Hey everyone, Jason here. Welcome to vlog episode 3 of Jason's O-Gauge Trains. It is the beginning of May 2021, and I was debating whether I should make this a full layout update episode or just keep it a blog episode, but I decided I really wasn't going to be showing too much actual layout progress, just some things that have been added and some things I've been working on. So for that matter, I'm keeping it a blog episode because it'll be a little bit shorter than a full layout update video. The first thing I want to do is thank everybody who joined the live stream a couple weeks ago. Uh, I had my second ever live stream to celebrate hitting 7,000 subscribers. It was a lot of fun. I think over 200 people at one point were watching the stream. I gave a few items away, answered a bunch of questions, and ran some trains, and overall it was just a lot of fun. It went a lot better than the first live stream I did, but after re-watching it, I noticed that there was definitely still some room for improvement, mainly with the audio. So you might have noticed that in this episode I do have a little lapel mic attached to my shirt. I went ahead and got a wireless mic uh, made by Rode, which is a pretty nice brand of wireless mic. I decided to uh, go for something higher quality right off the bat, considering how many videos I make and the fact that I want to do more live streams in the near future. I think it was about $200 on Amazon, which is pretty steep uh, for people who aren't into audio or don't know anything about it, but it was really easy to hook up and use, and I'll be using it in this blog episode and plan to use it in all my videos moving forward. So if you missed that live stream, never fear, I will be doing more live streams in the future. I'll probably do one in the next week or so just to test out this microphone and make sure that you guys can hear me okay while I run trains around and we can just do a, a short live session. But also I'm closing in on the 8,000 subscriber mark and I think I'm only about 400 subscribers away from that. So once I hit 8,000, I'll do another live stream celebratory video and I don't know if I'm going to give anything away for that one, maybe, probably, but uh, I'll wait until I hit that mark first. One other announcement to be made is that I've recently started a Instagram page for the layout. It's called Jason's O-Gage Trains. I post some updates on there in between my YouTube videos and I also do some live streams on there on occasion. Typically just when I'm in the basement running trains for fun. So go ahead and follow me on there if you'd like if you're on Instagram. Again, that's Jason's O-Gage Trains on Instagram. So anyway, let's go ahead and show you what's new with the layout and what I've been working on. So if you've been watching my last few videos, it should be no surprise, I've added more coal cars to the layout. I added the final two-pack of Burlington Northern Santa Fe coal cars that you see in front of you here, and I've also added four Burlington Northern coal cars. So I think that brings the grand total on the layout to 30 coal cars right now. There's a couple still at the old layout in Ohio that I have to bring up here, and there's still more that I have to pick up at Stockyard Express. Kind of ashamed how many coal cars I've bought lately, but I'm going to be able to have a Burlington Northern coal train, UP, BNSF, or Norfolk Southern coal car train when this is all said and done. And if you follow any of the Facebook groups, you will have seen I had a bit of a mishap this past week where one of the old coal cars I had, actually the knuckle came open and I wasn't paying attention and the train rear-ended itself. It was the third car in the train, so it ended up having <laughs> rear-ending like the entire coal car train. And as you can see in the pictures, it was quite the mess, almost kind of a prototypical scene. And I got really lucky here that one of the coal cars didn't fall through the access hole and onto the ground, but hey, that's what happens. It was one of the really old coal cars that I had. I just glued the knuckles shut and nothing was damaged. Everything was fine and life goes on, but that's just what happens sometimes when you're running long trains and you look away for a second. If you're, if you're not paying attention, uh, trains do derail. And so I just had a laugh because you know, these things happen and people always make comments like, oh, your trains run so smoothly and how do you have such great operations? And I'm like, well, because everything you see is edited on my computer. And when I'm running the trains for fun, these kind of things happen. But thought you guys would enjoy seeing that. Two random things that I guess are worth mentioning that I didn't capture in my last layout update. One is that I filled up this shelf with MTH real tracks. I bought some track off of a seller on Facebook to uh, have some track on every single one of these shelves that extends uh, end to end. 
Um, I won't do that for every one of my shelves, and you might be wondering why is it MTH Real Tracks? Well, I had a bunch left over from an old layout, so it just kind of made sense that I would use that track rather than throw it out or sell it. Um, and you can get MTH Real Tracks at a pretty cheap price right now, so I found a bunch of straight sections for sale, went ahead and bought them, and now I have some track to set all my trains on for this shelf. Also, I finally bought a dehumidifier for basements, um, at least up here in Michigan, especially during the summer months, it can get pretty humid down here. And it's good to have a dehumidifier to keep moisture out of the basement. Uh, will help anything down here from, you know, rusting or aging or getting any kind of mold or mildew on it. Helps protect the train. So if your trains are in a basement and, you know, you get pretty high humidity in the summer, definitely recommend a dehumidifier. So one thing I did this week was I cleared off all the tools and things from the peninsula over to this part of the layout because it's time to cut the hole for the turntable. So the turntable is in that box. It's a Millhouse River Studio turntable. I believe it's the 34 inch, which is the long, largest one that they make. Um, I have to take it out of the box and trace the hole here. And so I thought I'd go ahead and start unpackaging it and show you what it looks like right out of the box. So there's what's left of the box now that it's been opened and here we have the Millhouse River Studio turntable. Obviously I knew this thing would be big but now that the dish is actually sitting on the peninsula, wow this thing is huge. So here's obviously the pit itself, all of the uh, gearing and all of the actual mechanical bits are underneath and included with the kit we well, get a free t-shirt and then these are all the detail parts that I'll assemble later once it's actually in place the switch panel to control it is in this bag and then a complete instruction manual so what I'm gonna have to do next is remove the bridge and flip this whole thing upside down so I can trace the circle of where it's going to go. That's going to be very critical. I'm going to have to move this around a few times and try to figure out where's the perfect spot for this so that there's room for trains to actually be parked on the whisker tracks. It'll likely be moved over a bit to the left because the whisker tracks will be on the right. So this is pretty cool. This is what my main focus is going to be on for the layout in these next few weeks. And I almost forgot, people always wanna know what the next videos are that are coming down the pipeline. So besides doing some more live streams, I wanna do a video on how I do the wiring for the layout, particularly how the MTH DCS and Lionel Legacy are hooked up into my wiring panel. So I'll be working on one of those videos soon. I also still wanna do a review of the MTH Premier Restoration Big Boy. Uh, there's already some reviews of that on YouTube, but I still wanted to make one anyway because who doesn't like seeing footage of a big boy? I mean, they're one of the coolest engines made in this hobby. And besides that, I'm just going to be working hard down here so I can hopefully do more layout updates of actual progress being made. But that's what's coming down the pipeline. I hope you enjoyed that quick little update. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments below. Always do my best to answer them. And again, there will be some more live streams coming up. I'll probably try to do one every month or so, but keep an eye out on those videos. I usually try to announce at least a day or two ahead of time before I do one. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.